Sunday School, March 12th, 2023. Today's lesson, Jesus Restores What is Broken. This is the second in a series about what it means to encounter Jesus. Consider what it is like to be rescued from a helpless situation. Consider witnessing a miraculous healing or perhaps having been healed yourself. And think about experiencing the restoration of a broken relationship, something that you have been through or something you've seen others go through. Today we're going to talk a little bit about what it means to have Jesus repair something in a person's life and perhaps the things in our lives that still need repair. We'll look at three scripture passages today, all coming from the fifth chapter of John. First, let's consider the story we find in verses 2 through 7. John tells us that by the sheep gate in old Jerusalem, there was a pool that was called Bethesda. In the Hebrew and Aramaic languages, Bethesda means house of mercy. We know there's at least one famous hospital that has this name. This pool was actually two pools of water surrounded by five long porches or porticos. It was believed that an angel would come and stir these spring-fed pools and the disturbance in the water would cause people who had various handicaps and afflictions to try to get into the water. The first one in the water would be healed. Now, among this large number of invalids, Jesus focused on a man there who had been crippled for 38 years. This man did not yet know who Jesus was. But Jesus, being God, knew who he was. And he asked him, Do you want to be made whole? Now, instead of saying, yes, I want to be made well, he says, sir, I have no one. Now, this might seem like he was making an excuse, but this could also be seen as a very sad testimony to how this man who had been at this pool for a long time, how sad his situation really was. Now let's look at the events found in verses 8 through 11. Now rather than engage in a conversation, Jesus simply says, Rise, take up your bed, and walk. Immediately the man who had been crippled was healed. So he takes up his bed, which was just a little mat he was lying on, and he began to walk. Now this happened on the Sabbath, and the Jews, especially the Sadducees and Pharisees, had made a whole lot of rules, some of them pretty silly, a lot of rules about observing the Sabbath. Now originally, the Lord created the Sabbath for man and the animals that serve man in his work would have a day to rest and recover. It was made for their benefit. But all the legalists had come up with all these ideas about how the Sabbath should be enforced. And this was something Jesus directly opposed. So when the man began to walk around carrying his little mat around the pool and the temple area. Of course, the Jewish leaders confronted him and said, 
it's not lawful for you to be carrying that around on the Sabbath. The man's reply was, He who made me whole told me to take up my bed and walk. Here's a few notes about this passage. Faith requires obedience. Jesus saves you, makes you whole, and tells you to do something, then believe and do what he says. Another thought, the authority of Jesus exceeds human authority. The laws of God are strong and they will stand forever. It is not necessary for us to do anything to embellish them. And certainly man should not make laws that are contrary to the laws God has already made. So, if you are obedient to Jesus, and your obedience to Jesus goes contrary to what the current culture believes is right, then you can expect to be challenged and to be criticized. And we who have encountered Jesus have a testimony to share. Now, this man did not yet know who Jesus was, and he didn't fully understand what had happened. So when the Pharisees had asked him about who did this, he wasn't able to tell them right away. After the man had been confronted by the Pharisees, a short time later, he encountered Jesus a second time, here able to walk, healed. He ran into Jesus again in the temple. And Jesus says to him, You have been made well. Sin no more. Or something worse might happen to you. So Jesus not only addressed the physical need that the man had, he also warned him about his spiritual life. So then the man who had been healed was able to tell the Jewish leaders who had healed him. Now once the man pointed Jesus out, they knew who he was. They already wanted to kill him. Now they wanted to kill him even more because he had violated their law. They cared nothing for the man being healed. They cared about their authority being challenged. And now let's look at verses 19 through 21. So then the Jews turned their attention to Jesus, confronting him about his healing. And they had had conversations like this with him before about healing on the Sabbath. And he says, The Father and the Son have been working. And Jesus said he was able to do the miracles he did because of his Father. And of course, this made the Pharisees and the Sadducees want to kill him that much more because he made himself equal to the Heavenly Father. Jesus said, you're going to see even greater things, things that will be amazing. And you will see the dead raised. You will see the Lord give life to those he chooses. Jesus restores brokenness. He can restore physical brokenness. More importantly, he can restore a broken heart, a broken mind, a broken spirit. And while we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus and look forward to him resurrecting us, in the meantime, he gives a new life, a new birth, a new creation, along with a great new hope through the salvation 
of our soul in this present world. As we prepare to wrap up this lesson this week, think about these things. Watch what God is doing. And if you can, be a part of it. Share your testimony. Think about how God has restored you. And if there's some parts of your life that still need restoration, pray about that and seek God's favor. And help others who also might be experiencing brokenness. Lord Jesus, thank you for saving our souls and making us whole and continuing to make us more like you. Help us now to be obedient and act upon our faith. In your name we pray and live our lives. Amen.